Hi, my name is Kathy. Welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a face of makeup while I tell you the case of Eric Smith and Derek Roby. Now, before we go any further, I just want to take this time to warn you that this case is extremely disturbing and it involves children. And if you're feeling like you just cannot handle that, I don't blame you. Um, you can either mute this video and just watch me put my makeup on, or you can wait until the next episode. Um, and I don't, I don't blame you at all. It's going to be a really tough one. Eric Smith was born January 22nd of 1980. And he lived in um, a small town called Savona, New York. And when I think of New York, I always think of like a really big place, but this was a smaller town. And um, so he was really close to his grandparents and Red and Eddie. And, uh, you know, they said that he was really affectionate and loving and funny. His grandma said that he'd like to clown around a lot. So um, from their perspective, he was just a sweet little boy and fun, funny. And he was close with his sister too. And she said the same thing, that he was fun and, and funny and a, a pleasure to be around. But he was very, very bullied when he was young. And this is all when he was very young. Um, so he was bullied because of his looks. And he, so he had red hair and it was like bright flame orange. And he had really, really thick glasses because he had really impaired vision. And apparently his ears were lower than they should be and stuck out a lot. I've looked at a lot of video and pictures of him and I think that his ears looked normal. And he was a very cute little boy. He was. He had a cute little nose. I think it's really cute when little kids have glasses on, even though it's not like an aesthetic or anything, but you know what I mean? Like, I think that it's cute, but kids can be, kids can be really, really hard on one another. And it was apparently older kids that really targeted him and, and were mean to him. And he had a hard time in school because he was just, uh, he was just so severely bullied. So now we're in the summer of 1993 and Eric is getting ready to go to a summer camp, like a day camp. I had those when I was growing up and I really, really loved them. Um, ours were like a VBS or like vacation Bible school. Anyways, we loved it. There was games and there was snacks and there was story time and craft time. And that's, those, that's one of the highlights from when I was little. So anyways, he rode his bike to day camp or summer camp and he was told to leave because of bad behavior. And that's, that's what we know. He was told to leave because of bad behavior. Now, from my experience in, in day camp, in summer camp, for someone to be told to leave because of bad behavior, a kid to be told to leave because of bad behavior, it had to be really, really bad. It had, it, it had to be bad. Like, kids are already kind of wild as it is, but for a kid to be sent away, so I'm, I can only imagine what it was. He's 13 years old at this point. So uh, he's sent away and he's raging. I mean, he is furious, he's pissed. And as he is riding his bike away back home, he sees a little four-year-old walking to summer school, which was very close to the little boy's home the little four-year-old's home and so he's walking and Eric sees him doesn't know him doesn't know his name doesn't know anything about him but he sees him and he says hey I know of a shortcut you're going to summer school right 
And the little boy said, yeah. So he said, okay, follow me, follow me. And so the little boy followed him because it's another pretty young boy. So yeah, he's just trying to be helpful. So this little four-year-old followed him to the shortcut, which was actually a trail that led to a pretty private, quiet area in the middle of the woods. And once they got out to the woods, you know, the little boy's just following him along and following the big boy. Big boy knows where to go. And he closed, Eric closed in on him and strangled him. And he, the little boy, Derek, Derek is his name. He's flailing around and scared and he's, he is trying to get out of this situation. So he's fighting. So Eric grabs a rock and starts to beat him with it. He beats him in the head pretty severely. He beats him very severely because he beats him to death. Then he pours Kool-Aid into the wounds. And then, and let me just trigger warn you guys right now. This is a very big trigger warning as if this isn't bad enough already. He took a tree branch and he sodomized the little boy. And then when he felt better, he got on his bike and rode home. Casually, people saw him. He's just riding his bike. He's a little boy. He's a 13 year old boy just riding his bike. When Derek's mother went to pick him up from day camp, she was told that he never made it there. Now this was her first time letting her four year old, her child, walk somewhere on his own. He wanted to do it on his own. And this is what happens. And I can only imagine the absolute guilt. Of course, it wasn't her fault. This was not her fault, okay? It was Eric's fault. He made a choice and he took that little child's life and then he went on with his day. Just doing whatever he wanted. Went home, rode around town. So his mother gets police involved looking for the child and then they can't find them. Well, that wooded area was close by, so it actually did not take very long to find his body. So when this happens, news is traveling around town because remember, this is a small town. Uh, so Eric's mother tells him, hey, you were, you were around riding your bike. Uh, you went to camp today too. You need to go out and look for him. So he said, okay. So he goes out helping. Um, so by the time he reaches police, um, you know, they had already found his body and he said, oh, I was riding my bike by when that happened. I saw, I saw something happening. So the police are thinking this is just a f perfect witness, even though he's only 13, it's hard when it's a kid, um, but he, he's a witness. He really, he saw what happened. Um, I'm not, I don't know what the story was that he told them. All I know is it didn't take long to figure out that there was no crazy lunatic out there. And what police thought at first was that there was, you know, a drifter around. The little boy was, was sexually assaulted. So we're thinking, okay, registered sex offender, or not even, maybe not even registered. This is the eighties. So things were different back then. This was when I was little. Um, so they're thinking that this is a, a drifter, some crazed person that, you know, feeds off of children. But it didn't, like I said, it, it didn't take long. He confessed to his mother. He told his mom, 
uh, that he had done it very flatly, very matter of factly, never got emotional, showed zero emotion. So police have to come for him. And you know, Derek's mom lost her baby and Eric's mom is losing her baby at the same time. So now police have to figure out why, why did this happen? And seeing video of a little 13 year old boy with these thick glasses on and this bright red hair, he had still such a baby face. Seeing him get put into the back of a police car was hard. It was hard to see. The most emotion that he showed was he, he put his hands to the glass of the window when he was in the back of the car. And uh, I mean, it's enough to shatter your very soul. But then so, so is uh, the thought of what he did. He suffered from anger issues that apparently were well known. So now we're gonna start learning a little more about Eric. We can't learn too much about Derek because he was only four years old when he died. He didn't have enough life for us to really know anything about him except for that he was a beautiful boy. And he was happy and sweet and um, what more do you need to know about that beautiful child? So let's talk about Eric. This poor boy who was so, so bullied. Well, now we're starting to find that he seemed to be quite the bully. I'm not discounting the fact that he was most likely bullied at school. I'm not saying that he was or wasn't. I wasn't there. He said that he was very bullied. His sister, who loved him very much and probably still does love him very much, she said that, you know, she witnessed a lot of the bullying, like, uh, you know, groups of kids calling the names or emptying out his book bag. Those are the things that I've heard about as far as like the bullying. And he did, you know, have bright orange hair and so on and so forth. Um, but he went to sleepovers and he had friends. So you've got one story that's saying he, he was a loner, he didn't have many friends, you know, he, nobody wanted to hang out with him. But then you've got all these other people saying he stayed the night at our house at a slumber party, he would come and want to hang out with my kids, so on and so forth. And that he would be violent towards them. One child uh, woke up in, in the middle of the night at, during a slumber party that he was at and woke up feeling a, a searing hot pain here and woke up to see Eric standing over him with a lit cigarette and a blank look on his face and he was burning that, that little boy's face with the cigarette. And then we find out that he had killed pets. He had killed, yeah, kids, strangled the life out of them, used rope, different things. Um, and we all know that when we see young people or really people of any age going out of their way to kill animals, not good. That's that's never good and they usually escalate and we've seen it a million times and we're gonna continue to see it in our lifetime because that is the pattern, there's no denying it. So before this happened, he's hurting kids, he's killing animals, killing pet cats. He's going to his father and saying, I'm angry, I'm, I'm full of anger all the time. So his father tried to help him by saying, if you're, if you're angry and you're full of anger, you need to get it out. You need to get it out by punching a pillow or punching something and scream and get it out. 
And let me remind you, this is the 80s, okay? Or the 90s now, right? What year are we in? 1993? A long, a long time ago, believe it or not. Uh, so, you know, his dad told him, take your anger out in this kind of way. And so he took that as, I'm gonna go and find a tree and punch it until my knuckles are bleeding. And that's what he did. He went out, punched a, a tree until his knuckles were bleeding, and then came in and showed his dad, look, look what I did. And I doubt that his dad was like, go punch, you know, a cement block and break your hands. I think what his dad was trying to do was trying to help him get this anger out in a healthy way. I mean, what do you do when your child is killing the family pets and saying, I'm full of anger, I want to hurt somebody? Um, nowadays, there's a, we have a lot more options. Then, what do you do? They tried. They tried. Now, another thing that was mentioned later on during the, uh, the court hearing, there was something brought to light, of course, by the defense. And what it was was that uh, his mother was on a medication when she was pregnant with him. And the medication is called... Okay, you know what? I'm just going to pop it up here on the screen because I'm not sure exactly how to say it. But that's not the point. It doesn't matter. What matters is that this drug, if you're taking it while you're pregnant, can cause severe problems with your fetus. And then when they're born, they can have a, an array of issues. Sight being one of them, and he had major sight issues. He didn't show emotion on his face. He seemed to have a blank stare a lot of the time, and he just, he took pleasure in hurting living things and killing living things. Could this drug have caused that? I mean, it's very, it's possible. There are so many things that we don't know. Is that an excuse? No, but it's important for us to figure out why these things happen. Um, so that was brought up. Another thing that was brought up was, of course, the bullying. You know, he was bullied so much that he finally killed an innocent four-year-old that had no chance against him. Furthermore, they started to look at his father. And it wasn't his biological father, it was his adoptive father. So his father adopted him. And um, he was strict and, you know, he, he spanked the kids when they were in trouble. And they brought that up and said, you know, because he was spanked is why he killed. It, to me, my, my thing is, you know, there, were, there was a, at least one other child that I know of, the sister. She was treated the same way. She didn't kill anyone. So there's a lot of questions here. There's, there's a lot of unanswered questions here. In the end, this little boy, this little 13 year old boy who had, like I said, such, such a young looking face. Um, at this point during the court hearing, he's 14 years old. Um, so he's found guilty, uh, second degree murder. And the age causes problems here. So he got nine years to life. It is a really hard situation when it's a child. Um, but with his history from a young age, there are major, major signs of serious, serious problems. Will medication help? I, I'm, I, can't, I don't know. I don't have the answer. What I do know is that he has done his time and um, he, he did do at least one interview that I found from prison um, several years ago, several years ago. And, you know, he talked about how he came to his father and he asked for help. You know, he said he needed help because he was angry. He had anger issues. And he said that now he has morals and he didn't then and that he's changed and that um, he would trade places with Derek if he could. So 
All that being said, he was released this month. He is a free man now. And could it be possible that he's rehabilitated? He has been raised behind bars around other criminals. And his life before that was full of terror and rage and violence and death. Is it possible for him to go on and have a normal life from here? We know that Derek can because he doesn't have that choice. But now Eric is free. What does everyone think about that? How are we feeling about this? My dear friend asked me to cover this case. She said that the world needs to know. The world needs to know about little Derek and the world needs to know what this boy, who is now a man, has done and that he is free living among us. And um, it was a really, really hard case for me to do. It really crushed my soul from the beginning to end. Nobody wins. Nobody. Eric doesn't win. Derek certainly doesn't win. The families both lost a, a child. There's no winners here. Um, I'm glad that this case is done. I'm glad that everyone knows about little Derek. And I can only hope that Eric is better now. Anyways, this is the look. And I hope that you have a great day. Bye.